Ah, hello human beings, Power Gamer here. And don't mind me, I'm just adding a nice picture to my desk. Why, you didn't ask? Well, I've been thinking a lot about art recently and how it comes in many different shapes and sizes. Sometimes in pictures like this, other it can be something you would never expect, like the Portal series. So I've decided to add more art to my life. And brace yourselves because I recently won a picture in an art auction and I didn't even look at the thing. I mean, I don't need to. Art is art and I will appreciate it no matter what. It's beautiful. Ah, uh, Portal, or Hole as it's known in France. One of the most beloved video game series of all time. Despite there being only two entries, Portal has captured the hearts of anyone who's played it. The game originated from Narbocular Drop, a free-to-play game made by students at the DigiPen Institute of Technology. It was a puzzle game where you created portals and utilized physics to make your way through a dungeon. It was then discovered by Robin Walker, one of the head developers of Valve. He gave the students a chance to show off the game at Valve's office, and they ended up being offered jobs at the company. They began to develop a more fleshed-out version of the game, and while many elements were kept, they ended up changing some of the portal mechanics and the game's location went from a dungeon to a laboratory. Development of the game lasted just over two years and surprisingly had no more than 10 people work on it. The first year of development was focused entirely on gameplay, but playtesters thought there should be some sort of narrative to the game. So they got many of the writers from Half-Life, Valve's previous juggernaut, to work on it, and they even incorporated the game into the Half-Life universe. The levels were originally going to be a lot larger, but they decided to shrink them down so it would be easier to see what you were supposed to do, since many of the playtesters just ended up screwing around with the background elements. The game was first released in The Orange Box, which was a collection of a bunch of Valve's games, including Half-Life 2, its two expansions, and Team Fortress 2. It was released for PC and the Xbox 360 on October 10th, 2007, with a PS3 version on December 11th. Portal wouldn't be released on its own until April 9th, 2008, and even then, that was only for the PC. The game received universal acclaim upon its release, quickly being regarded as the best game in The Orange Box and one of the greatest games ever made. By 2011, it had sold more than 4 million copies, including both the standalone version and in the collection. It also gained a massive following online and became a large internet meme for several years. The success resulted in a sequel released in 2011 that did even better. It was re-released as Portal Still Alive for the Xbox 360, which featured new levels, and it was recently brought to the Nintendo Switch as part of the Portal Companion Collection. It was even one of the franchises featured in LEGO Dimensions in 2015. Yeah, I'm not gonna dance around this one. I freaking love Portal. It's one of my favorite video game series of all time, and I genuinely replay both of these games at least once a year. I'm really excited to play the first one again, so let's fire up the Switch version and have some fun. The game takes place in the Aperture Science Enrichment Center, a laboratory where people can serve as test subjects for various devices created by a tech company named Aperture Labs. The Enrichment Center is run by one of their most complex creations, an AI unit known as the Genetic Life Form and Disk Operating System, or GLaDOS. You play as a young woman in an orange jumpsuit named Chell, who's presumably volunteered to be a test subject. After awakening in a small room, GLaDOS sends you through a series of test chambers using the Aperture Science handheld portal device, or in layman's terms, the portal gun. A device that can create interconnected portals on special surfaces. Your job is to complete the challenges inside the test chambers using the portal gun. And uh, that's about it, really. The story seems pretty uninteresting, but the game very cleverly uses the environment and minimal dialogue to slowly reveal the nature of the laboratory. GLaDOS herself seems to have a more dangerous side, and while she promises you'll receive cake at the end of the tests, it's probably best not to trust her. She regularly guides you throughout the chambers, and by that I'll mean she'll provide dialogue that either makes you question why someone would agree to this, or just laugh because she's freaking hilarious. Cake and brief counseling will be available at the conclusion of the test. Thank you for helping us help you help us all. The game looks really impressive for 2007. Sure, it's a little dated, but the lab has a great atmosphere to it, and there's the sense of intrigue, yet it's also kind of creepy. There isn't that much music in this game, but the few pieces that do play during the more intense sequences are pretty cool, though they're mostly kind of forgettable. Chell is a silent protagonist, so she never says a word throughout the entire playthrough, and GLaDOS is the only other character you interact with. But thankfully, her voice actress, Elle McLean, does a phenomenal job with her, and the writing is amazing. There are so many great lines in this game that not only make me laugh, but they make me laugh hard. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. We. If you become lightheaded from thirst, feel free to pass out. As part of a previously mentioned required test protocol, we can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be 
Missed. You can donate one or all of your vital organs to the Aperture Science Self-Esteem Fund for Girls. It's true. Now, while you might assume that this is a shooter game because of the first-person perspective and you're using a gun of some sort, it's actually a puzzle game with platforming elements. Like I said, your goal is to use the portal gun to complete the various puzzles inside each test chamber. You're provided with an assortment of objects made by the facility, and while the objectives within change, your main goal is to simply open the door and go through it. Once you do, you'll find an elevator which will take you to the next chamber, and I always turn around when I get inside one. No reason, I just do it. The portal gun is used to create two portals that connect to each other, one blue and one orange. You get it in chamber 2, and at first you can only fire blue portals, but you get an upgrade that lets you make both in chamber 11. You can't just fire portals wherever you want, though. They can only be created on flat white surfaces. If you step through one, you pop out the other, and it honestly feels kind of weird every time it happens. You use the portals to move objects and yourself around the chamber. They're mostly used for getting to higher platforms and going across gaps. You can pick up almost any object, with the main one being these large cubes that you place on giant buttons. The buttons almost always open doors, either the main ones or the smaller ones. This is by far the most common of the puzzles you'll see. There's smaller buttons that you can push too, and these ones usually trigger timed doors, so you'll have to move quickly before they reset. The other most common thing you'll see are these things that shoot spark orbs. Ow. They'll bounce back and forth if they hit a wall, and you want to use your portals and these angle panels to redirect them into these large red holes, which normally cause platforms to move. The game's puzzles can be split into two types, ones that require using various pieces of technology, and ones that require you to move yourself using the game's momentum and physics. When you're traveling through portals, you'll maintain any speed you've gained, so if you fall in a portal on the floor and pop out of one on the wall, you'll go flying across the room. This is easily one of my favorite things to do in the game. It really makes you think about how to approach each situation, and it's just downright fun. And thankfully, Chell has a pair of special long fall boots that make it so she always lands on her feet and can withstand a fall from any height. Which is good, because if she didn't have these things, 80% of the jumps would cause her to splat like an egg. That was supposed to break. That's better. Probably the most interesting part of this game is some of the crazy things you can do with the portal gun. Depending on how you line up your shot, you can skip decent chunks of some of the levels. If you want to break the game, you can do some absurd speedrunning stuff. And easily, the most famous of all, this! This will never not be entertaining. Although I find it really weird that this trick only works if you're facing down. If you look upward, you'll move slightly so that you miss the portal. I have no idea why this happens, and I have no idea if it's intentional or not. Since this game doesn't have fall damage, there aren't that many things that can kill you. You only die if you get hit with one of the spark ores, or fall into the disgusting water that many of the chambers are filled with. You'd think Aperture Labs would be able to afford a plumber. You can jump in this game, but it's kinda pathetic. You're clearly supposed to use momentum to make the bigger jumps. This is just for tiny ones. You can also crouch to get under lower platforms, but it's barely used at all. The game doesn't really have much in terms of side content aside from some achievements and these radios. They're scattered throughout each of the chambers, and if you take them to the right spot, the light turns green. If you do this with all of them, you get another achievement. Yeah, don't bother doing this, it's not worth it. At the end of each chamber, and sometimes in the main parts of them, are these force fields. Passing through one of them removes any portals you've shot and disintegrates any object you try to bring through them. So sadly, you can't smuggle cubes into other chambers. Well, there go my business plans. The Switch version also has the bonus maps that were in the Stay Alive re release. There really isn't that much to say about them, though. They're fairly similar to the chambers in the main game. It's still cool that they're here, though. There's 19 total chambers in the game, but they all feel kind of similar until we get to chamber 16. It's here we encounter the only enemies in the game, the sentry turrets. If you step in front of its laser, it will fire an endless supply of bullets at you. The only way to take them out is to knock them over, and there's plenty of fun ways to do this. You can pick them up and drop them, push them over, drop a block on them, pop a portal underneath them so they go flying, and my personal favorite, hit them with another turret. They also have these gentle voices that I still have no idea if they're adorable or creepy. This level even has a panel you can crawl under and explore a little hidden area of the lab. Oh, that's pleasant. Now that that's settled, we reach chamber 17 where you're given the weighted companion cube. It looks the same as the normal cubes, only it has hearts on every side of it. You have to carry it with you throughout the chamber and use it to climb upward, open doors, shield yourself, and even redirect spark orbs. It's all fun and games until the end where GLaDOS forces you to give it the old yeller treatment and throw it in an incinerator. Au revoir, my lucky friend. You euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. Jeez, GLaDOS, I'm grieving! We then reach chamber 18, which is by far the hardest chamber in the game. It's pretty complicated and throws almost everything the game has at you. Turrets, momentum, time switches, moving platforms, spark orbs, and it ends with you essentially having to bounce yourself upward by shooting portals while in mid-air. Chamber 19 is the last one, and it's much simpler. The only complicated thing is having to navigate around walls while on a moving platform. But now the tests are complete, and we finally get our cake! Hey, 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 you never said I would be baked with it! Yep, GLaDOS tries to kill you, so now you have to use the portal gun to get past the fire. Once you do, we need to teach her some manners, so you have to make your way through the back areas of Aperture Lab. 
Labs. This is really cool getting to see the rest of the Enrichment Center and seeing how everything works. You also really need to think outside the box when it comes to navigating this place since there aren't as many areas you can put portals on. It's also fun seeing all the different things you can pick up, like this chair. This chair is my new friend. I will name him Charlie and he will accompany me on my journey. Come along, Charlie. We've got an AI to murder. Huh, looks like we have to go in this transport pipe. In you go, and now me. Wait, what's going on? Uh, uh, dang it, I think I'm stuck. Charlie, I think we're in trouble. <sighs> I gotta get out of here. Oh, wait, oh, wait, we're, wait, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Wait, Charlie! No! Charlie! I lost two friends in one day. GLaDOS will pay for this. So you wind up back in the third chamber, that's pretty cool, and go down the elevator shaft since the elevator already left. After some more navigation and avoiding this turret that shoots rockets at you, we finally reach GLaDOS's chamber. She begins mocking you like she's been doing this whole time, and before she can cause further harm, one of these white orbs that's attached to her falls off. So there's only one thing to do, burn it. You have to grab it, push this button to open an incinerator, and toss it in. Turns out GLaDOS has four special cores attached to her that affect her personality, and that one was a morality core. She reveals that it was a attached to her because she flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin which killed almost all of the scientists inside, so that explains why no one else is in here. The morality core was designed to stop her from doing that, but now that it's gone, she begins to do it again. So we gotta take her out before it's too late. A rocket turret appears, and thankfully this entire room is a portal conductor so you can place portals almost anywhere. You have to create portals that line up the rocket so that it hits her and knocks off one of the three remaining cores. You then have to reach the core via falling into the floor and launching out the walls and repeat the previous process of chucking them in the fire. All the while, glad tells you you're doomed. You only have six minutes to do this before the neurotoxin kills you, and it can be really finicky trying to line up the rockets and grab the cores. And while the morality core was silent, the other ones actually say things that tie into their personality. First you knock off the curiosity core, which asks random questions, then the cake core, which lists ingredients for a cake recipe, and finally the anger core, which just growls viciously. What did I have to do to you? That's exactly what it says. Very once all the cores are destroyed, GLaDOS becomes destabilized and the whole room starts to blow. A large glowing light appears as Chell is sucked upwards, and she awakens outside the Enrichment Center seeing GLaDOS has been destroyed. Unfortunately, a system that was still operational grabs Chell using a giant robotic claw and drags her back down into the facility. The last thing we see is a delicious looking cake as a claw comes down and extinguishes the candle. The credits then roll and we hear the voice of GLaDOS sing an original song called Still Alive, and I genuinely love this song. It's a fantastic end to a fantastic game. absolutely amazing game. While it is insanely short, it only takes about three hours to beat on your first playthrough and less than two on any repeats, it is still tons of fun. The puzzles are brilliant, the gameplay is great, and the writing is absolutely hilarious. It is the total package, and I cannot recommend this game enough. I've heard some people say there are some weird side effects like believing in animate objects are your friends, but that's ridiculous. I know what's alive and what isn't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to help my pet rock with this presidential campaign. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here, huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Aperture science.